Have you ever been to a Bible study where someone encouraged you to tear out the blank page between Malachi and Matthew because it is, after all, one book? Indeed. But you probably have not learned much about the teachings of rabbis that fit into the time frame of that one page. There is a set of volumes called the Talmud, which is a series of commentaries on the Tanakh, or Old Testament. These teachings began to be circulated as an oral tradition approximately in the time of Ezra, about 400 BCE, and developed and continued until they were committed to writing between 200 and 500 CE. We should be mindful that the written work reflects an older oral tradition, sometimes collectively called Midrashim. I think you will be surprised to hear many of these teachings. The Midrash is like any other religious writing. It has good things and bad things in it. Since it is based on the truths in the Bible, there are some insightful conclusions. There are also men's twisted extrapolations. Now you are about to hear words which you have heard before, and you will have to come to some conclusion about how it happened that the teacher from Nazareth spoke the same words as the religious leaders who not only despised and disregarded him in his day, who were complicit in his death, and who continued to demean him for centuries afterward. It is like many ships that start from the same harbor. Some may head out in different directions, some may start together and then diverge, yet they may arrive at the same port, only at different times. They all start from the same place, and end in the same place. We are going to hear from Hillel, the famed teacher of Gamaliel, born, it is reported, in about 110 BCE and living to the ripe old age of 120. He lived long enough to have seen Yeshua come into the temple as a small boy of 12. Was he one of the ones marveling at Yeshua's exposition in Luke 2? We are going to hear from Shimon bar Yochai, one of only two students who were ordained by the famed Rabbi Akiva. He lived around the time of the destruction of the Second Temple and suffered persecution under the Roman Emperor. There are stories of his having lived in a cave with his son for 13 years. And many other voices, named and unnamed, bringing forth truths founded on their understanding and ramifications of the Holy Word of Yehovah, truths also expressed by Messiah. Generally, in these writings, we encounter a specific formula. That is, Rabbi X says in the name of Rabbi Y, who says in the name of Rabbi Z, and so on. The lineage of how each teaching was passed down is important to the documentation. However, of Yeshua it is written in Matthew seven twenty-eight and 29. And so it was when Yeshua had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. What Yeshua taught were truths from the Father. As much as is possible, I have tried to give accurate attribution for these quotes. As it is, however, some remain anonymous. From the Rabbi Hillel, What is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. This is the entire Torah. The rest is commentary. Now go and study it. From Hanina ben Teradi a second-century rabbi. If two sit together and they share the words of Torah, the divine presence is in their midst. From Tractate Sota in the Talmud, with the measure a man measures, it is measured to him again. From Yossi ben Yehuda, a second-century rabbi, let your yes be honest and your no be honest. In Genesis Rabbah it is written, with Torah, freedom came into the world. From 3rd century Rabbi Abahu, the rain falls both for the righteous and for the wicked. From Leviticus Rabbah, if you are a man of distinction and entitled to a prominent seat at an assembly, seat yourself nevertheless two or three seats lower, for it is better to be told, go up, than to be asked to go down. Hillel was wont to say, if I condescend, I am exalted, but if I am haughty, I am degraded. From Tractate Sanhedrin, do not worry about today's trouble, for you do not know what a day will bring forth. From Rabbi Yochanan, a third century rabbi, if the judge said to a man, remove the splinter from your eyes, 
he would reply, remove the plank from your eyes. Again from Sanhedrin, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. From Rabbi Natan, a man who does good deeds and diligently studies Torah, to whom is he like? He is like a man who builds a house with a stone foundation and brick walls, so when flood water rises against the walls, that house will not wash away. But a man who does not do any good deeds, even though he studies Torah, to whom is he like? He is like a man who builds a house with bricks for the foundation and stones above for walls, so even when a little rain falls, the house immediately collapses. From first century Rabbi Nechunya ben Hakana. Whoever accepts the yoke of Torah will be released from the yoke of the kingdom and the yoke of earthly cares. From Leviticus Rabbah. You must not suppose that only he who has committed crime with his body is called an adulterer. He commits adultery with his eyes is also called an adulterer. From Tractate Betza. The Shabbat was given to you, not you to the Shabbat. From the Midrash. The non-Jew is your neighbor, your brother. To wrong him is sin. From Shimon bar Yochai, Israel is like a single body with one soul. When one is injured, all feel the pain. From Chaktate Ma'asrot, there will be no marital union in the world to come. Again from Genesis Rabbah. In it, a king entrusted to a man an orchard with two trees that were entwined one tree producing life-giving fruit, and the other poison. The man decided to let both trees grow until the king decided what to do about them. From Rabbi Tarfon, a first-century rabbi, the day is short, the work is plentiful, and the laborers are indolent, and the reward is great, and the master of the house is insistent. From Rabbi Eliezer the Great, who died in 117 CE, whoever has bread in his basket to eat today and says, what shall I eat tomorrow? Meaning he does not know how he will require bread for tomorrow. He is nothing other than from those of little faith. And about Yeshua himself, it is written in Mark 6, 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? And again in John seven twelve, And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some people said, He is a good man. And others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Amen.